Welcome to Flow Tricks. My name is Ken, and this is how to spin nunchucks from a wheelchair. This is going to be a multi-part series. Um, I just I want everyone to learn how to do nunchucks, and even if you're in a wheelchair, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pick it up. A matter of fact, there's just ways that you can capitalize it uh, in just about any type of scenario or situation. So. Uh, what I wanted to do is give you a basic rundown of awesome things that you can do. So I'm going to start from the very beginning and we're going to continue from there. So because this is a new series uh, focused on um, being able to spin a nunchuck from a wheelchair, I'm actually, I'm going to start off uh, from the very basics and we're going to continue forward. So the first thing is I'm wearing these headphones right here uh, because there's actually a microphone connected to it. And I'm doing a little test to see if this actually picks up my voice a little better. Eventually down the line, maybe I'll get a gigantic boom mic, but as of right now, we're just gonna do the headphone thing. So with nunchucking through a wheelchair, uh, the first question is that I'm gonna, I'd like to answer is what kind of nunchuck you should be using. And hands down, uh, I always say go with foam nunchaku. These right here are, I got at a martial arts store and they cost about 10 bucks, maybe 12 bucks. And then all I did was I, I took some tape, I got some glittery tape, and I also got some electrical tape, and I made this really nice design. The stripe design not only looks good, it actually has a nice visual effect as you can roll it around. It's not necessary to have a stripe design, but it definitely adds to the visual element. So uh, if you do get a nunchuck, you can order it online from Amazon. Um, I do know people that will be selling it, will be putting in the Flowtrix store as well. Uh, as well as that, uh, just go ahead and just get yourself a pair of nunchucks. If you still don't have one, you can always watch my video on how I built one out of old bills. So now we have our nunchuck. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find the balancing point of the chuck. So hold the nunchuck, one hand like this, and find the point where it balances nice and steady. This is like the center of a staff. So this is where all of your balance is at. So when you grab the chuck, you're gonna put your hand right across where the balancing point is at. This allows you to have the most control. For instance, as we do our rolls, you'll notice that I maintain a lot of control with it. So the first thing I'd like to do is tell you to find this, the balance point with two fingers and then just grab it. Grab it to where your thumb, if you were to stick it out, were to point at the chain. So I have it in with my right hand right now. I'm grabbing it sideways and my, my thumb, if I stuck it out, would point to this chain. This is called a front grip. A front grip is basically if uh, you were to stick your thumb out, there'd actually be more. There'd be more in the front of the nunchuck than in the back. Okay, the other side, let's go ahead and just let go and we'll grab it the other way now. This is called a back grip. And I always, liked, I always liked the back grip because it always looks like those horror movies or the scary movies where they have the knife and they're like I think I actually did that the very first time I made these uh, video tutorial series too. So this is a back grip. If I were to stick my thumb out, it would go across the back of the chuck, there'd be very little space left. The front grip, if I was holding it the other way, would be if I stuck my thumb out, it'd be pointing towards the chain and all this extra nunchuck. So again, front grip, back grip. The very first move that I'd like for you to practice with if you have a foam nunchuck is to grab it with your dominant hand. Now your dominant hand is your main hand, so for me, I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna grab it with my right hand. Now, the wheelchair that I have can be different than yours because there may be armrests. If you, don't, if you do have armrests, that's perfectly all right. I'm gonna try to accommodate for that. I'm gonna assume that I don't actually have this space around my lap. And in many cases, you won't need it. Um, there may be some slight modifications though, depending on the size and height of your wheelchair. The first move that we should work on though is, well, let's talk about the focus of nunchucks. When you're in a wheelchair, you basically, you have new points. You have the points where your legs are always gonna be bent forward. And also you're gonna have a lot of horizontal space right here. This is where your freedom is at. So what I'd like you to start with doing is by holding it with your right hand and bouncing it across the outside of the right bicep of your, of your right bicep. So it's gonna be right outside right here. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna to try to just come across our body, we're gonna kinda of hold it by our hip and we're gonna let it bounce right here. Now we're gonna do it very softly, very lightly, we're gonna let it bounce here. And uh, one thing that you notice is I'm not trying to hit it with this part of the chuck, okay? So if I hold my arm too far out, 
it's gonna hit and it can, it can uh, this is like your striking point, okay? If I were to swing this, the most force is here. So anytime we do something, this is called a bounce. Anytime we do a bounce, we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to let it bounce around here, around the balance point, because that's where there's the less force. We have the least amount of force at the balance point. So we're gonna, first we're gonna take the chuck and we're gonna hold it across our body like so, and we're just gonna bounce it to the same side of our arm. And from there, we're gonna bounce it to the opposite side of our arm, to the outside of our bicep from here, like this. So back and forth. Pretty simple, right? This is because it's the basics. Eventually what we'll be doing is redirects from there. There's all different kinds of great motions that we can do from this. But we first have to start at the basics. And what I want you to feel is just feel the transfer of the nunchuck going back and forth. Sometimes it may feel like it wants to go downward. And if that's the case, push your hand forward a little bit, forward and back like this. Now this is kind of an exaggeration, but if you feel it's not actually striking both sides, there might not be enough force for it to make a half moon. For instance, if a bird was looking from the sky straight down at my nunchuck, what they would see, what they would see is a half moon, it'd be, it'd be creating a half circle from my right to my left. So that's what you wanna to create too, is like a half circle if someone was standing right above you, here to here, like that. This will be your very first move and we will have many more. I'm just gonna give you a couple more things. We're gonna turn this into a combo. So we're gonna bounce it off the right. So we're, let's, start it, let's start from here. We're gonna start it kind of just laying off to our left side in our right hand. We're gonna bounce one, that's one. This is two. And then the third one, we're gonna kind of swing our hand and we're gonna let it roll down to our wrist like this. So it's gonna be one, two, slide. Do you see how that works? It's actually, once it hits two, it's just gonna kind of fall and roll and we're gonna move our hand just a little bit like this. So slide it out. Now what we're doing is we're gonna lift, we're gonna move our, our left hand across our body and you're gonna notice like it kind of creates an opening. We can either go high or low. This is where the space is at. So here, here, roll it, lift your arm up like so. And this time we're gonna go under. So our right hand is actually going to pull around the hand and come across and it's gonna slide under here and it's gonna lightly tap our side like that. So again, it'll be, we're holding it here. One, two, slide. We'll do this a couple times. So one, bounces across the right side of our bicep. Two, bounces across the left side of our bicep. We're gonna slide it like so and slash down. Uh, again, the slash down, the right hand is just moving to the outside of the left and swinging down like that. One more time, one, two, slide, slash. This is a very easy move, uh, a great way to start. Uh, if, you do have, if you do have arm rests, this may be a little bit, you may have to slash a little bit higher. If you don't, you can slash a little bit lower. Both are okay. I'm gonna do one more combo for today and then uh, we'll start getting into more. I'm hoping that we can do a lot of these. This might be a long series, but I think that this is gonna be really good. And also, I would very much like to teach this in live workshops. So if you are interested um, in live workshops for any type of class, including this one, definitely get in contact with me. The next move I wanna show you is a rip. A rip looks like this. Basically, we're taking the force of one of, of a nunchuck, we're taking the force with one hand and we're pulling it across to our other hand and exchanging the energy. Now, if you, if you are in a chair, you want to make sure that your hands are not too low because your legs will get in the way. So when you do a rip, you're going you're gonna to hold your arms slightly out and forward a little bit more. So try not to keep it too close to your chest because you may have something in the way. Take your hands, hold them straight forward like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to have one hand in a front grip, one hand is in a front grip, and the other hand is in a back grip. If this is a little difficult to understand, the back of my right fist is pointing towards the sky. The back of my right fist is towards the sky. The back of my left fist is towards the ground, okay? One's towards the sky, one's towards the ground. Now the one that's where the back of your fist is pointing towards the sky is gonna be the one that gets the chain. So my left hand, what it's gonna do, it's gonna lift up and it's gonna pull the chain 
behind my fist. Do you see this right here? The chain is wrapping behind the chuck that I'm holding. It's not going in front, otherwise it'll unwrap itself. But if you pull it behind, you'll see it. It actually kind of catches itself here. The moment we pull it upwards like so, watch where my left hand goes. It's gonna lift straight up in the air like this. So, one. What's gonna happen next is our right hand's gonna open, but the momentum of the pull is actually going to exchange it into this hand. So once we pull it this way, in slow motion, as I pull it and open my hand, the force of that pull is gonna exchange it, and all of a sudden, I'm, it's, this is gonna fly in my hand and I'm gonna grab it. The moment I grab it, let's just go ahead and see if you can grab it like that. So that's two. So one is this, okay? Two is open your hand and grab it. So one, and then two. Now, once you grab it, your hand rotates. Do you see this? Your hand's gonna rotate 180 degrees. So I grab like this, and as this is unwinding, my hand is actually gonna unwrap with it, and it's gonna wanna keep continue. The chuck is gonna continue spinning this direction. The moment our hand finishes 180 degrees, the hand that's up is just gonna go down and catch it. Now that sounds really complicated for what it is, so I'm gonna do it a couple times really slowly and you're gonna see exactly what happens. We'll do it kind of quickly first. Hand rolls over, that's one. Two is open your hand. Three is turn it 180 degrees. And then four is hand slaps down. So one more time. One is it crosses over to the other hand. Two is you open your, your other hand and grab it. Three is you open your hand, grab it, and flip it 180 degrees. And then four is your other hand comes down and grabs it. You can do the exact opposite on your other hand. As you notice, when your hand came down, you've switched places. Now your left is pointing towards the sky and your right is pointed towards the ground. So it's the same exact thing. There's one. We're just doing it the opposite way now. See, we've changed hands. That's two. Three is 180 degrees. And then four is, is the grab on the other end. That means that you can go from here to here infinitely. And once you get pretty fast, you can get a good rhythm going. Um, but again, just remember there's four steps to this. If you do like this, definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, this is a new series. I'm, I'm really hoping that this reaches out to a brand new demographic of people and we can get spinners, all kinds of spinners. I think everyone should be spinning. So uh, there's just, there's so much, it, there's so much it can do for you and in your life. So I really hope that you enjoy the series. And yeah, leave a message if you need anything else. Peace.